Good morning, Flagler County. I'm Rich Carroll. You're listening to Flagler's Morning News on Monday, November 22nd. And this local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow you. The Flagler County Schools book ban controversy will no longer involve the Flagler County Sheriff's Office. School board member Jill Wolbright filed a criminal complaint with the Flagler County Sheriff's Office saying the book, All Boys Aren't Blue by George Johnson, a journalist and LGBTQ activist, contains sexually explicit material that she believes is inappropriate for schools. Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley says there will be no criminal investigation. The facts of this case did not rise to the level of a criminal investigation as authorized under Florida law because the school board did not have adequate policies and procedures in place in directions for school librarian book purchases. Whether the book is appropriate for school libraries will be a decision for Flagler Schools District leadership. Wilbright outlines the next steps. First, that we update policy for. 14 to the current state law. Second, that we form the committee, make a judgment call on the placement of the book, whether to put it in our schools or not. And as I've said all along, that process, I'm fine with however that is determined. What's clear to me now is that the residents of Flagler County are very interested in this topic and they're very interested to see what the school board is going to do. Florida lawmakers met for a special session called by Governor Ron DeSantis last week to address federal vaccine mandates. Amy Cherry has the story. Republican State Rep and Speaker-designate Paul Renner, whose district includes Flagler County, spoke to WNZF in an exclusive interview. This was a rejection of a one-size-fits-all, heavy-handed federal approach to just about everything, but in this case, vaccines and mask mandates from the federal government. And so what we did is protect workers, and we protected parents and their rights to control how their children are educated and whether they're forced into wearing masks or forced to be quarantined. And so it represents the strongest set of laws to protect workers and to protect parents and their parental control over their education. Renner, who is vaccinated, says it should be a personal choice. All four bills dealing with vaccine mandates in the workplace and mask mandates in schools passed in party line votes and have already been signed by Governor DeSantis. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Amy Cherry. The first ever Fall Festival Chili Challenge took place on Saturday and drew thousands of people to the Florida Agricultural Museum. The competition for the best chili was between Flagler firefighters and the Sheriff's Department. Voting was done by the people and opinions were split right down the middle. Uh, I would say the Sheriff's. (laughs) I uh, I like the fire department more. The Flagler County Sheriff's Department was victorious and Sheriff Rick Staley said they'll be ready to defend their championship next year. The recipe for doing this again next year, I think my team already uh, is interested in doing it again. So the recipe will be locked up in the Green Roof Inn. The Fall Festival was a charity benefit for the Florida Agricultural Museum's youth programs and was presented by Tresco Bank and AgPro. The event was produced by Flagler Broadcasting. Palm Coast Fire Chief is awarded for his dedication to the nation and the community. Rich Petschke reports. Chief Jerry Forte was presented with the Tony Gasparino Lest We Forget Award from the Knights of Columbus Corpus Christi Assembly 2810 in Santa Maria del Mar Catholic Church. Chief Forte talks about how he felt getting the award. The the award itself with my family there means a lot. It's 31 years of what we've been doing to try to make the community better, culminating in a place that I hold dear is the Roman Catholic Church I was born and raised. I'm to be recognized by not only my peers, but my Catholic base. It got very emotional for me. Forte talks about why he loves his work. People on their worst day call 911, and when we show up, we make it better. And, and that is about the best feeling anybody can have in job satisfaction. The other thing is working with a wonderful group of people that we have, not only in Palm Coast, but in this county area. When I walk in or a chief officer walks into a fire station, we're greeted with hugs, not complaints. And there is no better satisfaction to sit down and listen to folks on any level and feel that inclusion. For Flightwear's Morning News, I'm Rich Petschke. 
The Rotary Club of Flagler Beach is holding its annual toy drive. Karen Johnson has details. The Rotary Club of Flagler Beach, now in its 21st year, is asking the community for support in providing toys for its annual Project Share Christmas Toy Drive that benefits children from newborn to 17 years old during the holidays in Volusia and Flagler counties. Roseanne Stocker is Project Share founder and chairperson. We know it takes a village to make every child's Christmas morning bright and happy. Our deadline for toy collection is Sunday, December 12th. Toys can be dropped off in Palm Coast at the Walmart Vision Center, in Flagler Beach at the Beach Village Drive Publix, or at any of Flagler County's Winn-Dixie stores. Registration for the program is now closed and the Rotarians are now at work collecting the toys, shopping, and preparing gift bags. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. Women who run businesses in Flagler County say that volunteering is among best practices for learning to run a business. Terry Belletto is the executive director of the Flagler Free Clinic. She said on a recent episode of the Business Report that women who volunteer at the clinic see what they can become. Volunteering is, to me, the very best way to get hands-on experience. I have seen so many young women really come up and become confident so that when they go to apply for that first job or apply for graduate school, they have this confidence of, I can do that. I've done this. Boletto said that at the Flagler Free Clinic, everybody who works or volunteers there is an equal. She said the clinic could not run without its volunteers. The Business Report is on Saturday mornings at 10 here on WNZF. Tomorrow, Nina with Loman's Funeral Home talks about girls coming up in the business world. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.